Hi Taurus, welcome to your mid-September reading. Thank you for being so patient and so understanding. It really means a lot to me. So Taurus, let me tell you about a concept that exists in Danish culture called the Yinta Laws. And it's a set of social norms that are strictly adhered to. Most of them have to do with not showing off, not thinking you're better than anybody, not calling any attention to yourself, being humble and quiet. And while those may not be in any way negative guidelines, the effects on the society are extremely damaging. It makes people insecure, makes them not want to stand out, not want to express their original ideas, not want to talk as much, not take as many risks. and therefore not feel as free. For the next four weeks, you don't have to live by those laws. You are allowed to express your unique and creative ideas to be supported by those around you for them, to start new ventures to put your all into them. But we can't overlook all the times where you have silenced yourself, made yourself small. Why, I wonder, is that coming up so hard right now? It could have a lot to do with Jupiter going direct it could have a lot more to do with Mars sitting there in your subconscious going retrograde. It's as if all these great things are happening and yet every time they happen, there is this kind of sting that has to do with the past and it doesn't have to do with a person and it doesn't have to do with the relationship. It's a general feeling a melancholy of sorts, five of cups. Why couldn't this happen to me? Why didn't this happen before? Why wasn't I privy to these things that I see now and that I can appreciate and that I can actually have, but there was a time when I really needed them and I didn't have them, but why am I even thinking about that time right now? I should be overjoyed that things are working out so beautifully that people want to hear my hidden thoughts that are so good and so creative and will make you a lot of money. And yet the more acceptance, the more wealth, the more adventure that flows to you it is having this peculiar effect. It's happening to me as well, where it's bringing up this, <laughs> this oppositional feeling. Everything is going really well. Why do I feel this intense kind of sadness? I think because the past few months, although you have performed beautifully. I think they've been much harder than you've let on. And now that you have reached a point of safety and you can relax and you are supported, you can finally feel all that was pushed down so you can survive. The anxiety, the fear, the pain, it didn't go anywhere. It's just been waiting for you to deal with it when you had time. So although things are on paper really great and will continue to be, God willing, 
emotionally you're a bit beat up and your mind is uh, insistent. Your mind is insistent on trying to turn the good thing into a source of anxiety, the big thing into a small thing, the adventurous thing into a scary thing. Don't worry. You're healing, you're adjusting. It's a process. Meanwhile, you have so much good luck. So much of what you have kept to yourself, perhaps even in sadness, Perhaps a lot of your sadness was born out of having to keep it to yourself. Now, it helps you win. And Virgo is bringing the earth elements the most delicious energy. So much good luck. So much connection. Even now that Mars is retrograde, even a love connection, something from the past, something comforting, something you have wanted back. In terms of money, things pick up again, that's great. You don't have to do much, except perhaps don't speak out of turn. You are in a uniquely beneficial position. For the next four weeks, you can set yourself up to make a lot of money. But if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time, you'll destroy this road that you could walk down and make money for years to come. So watch what you say and who you say it around. No speaking out of turn, especially around people that can have a substantial effect on your future. No need to do it. Don't say so much. No need to make any um, questionable jokes. Anything you can think of that you know will read like self-sabotage to you, don't say it because you will be in the rooms and you will be in the conversations and you will be making connections to further any new business ventures that you put forward right now. Any work-related energy that you put out there is going to be met with support. And the only thing really that you could do to mess it up is to let your mouth run drink too much and just talk. That'll ruin just about everything quickly. Because although you have these great ideas and you need to vocalize them and you need to put them into practice, you need to get going with it. There is still that danger factor on the other side of the spectrum of being eloquent, loquacious, both. The more you talk, the more opportunity you're giving yourself to get in trouble. So talk about your ideas, talk about your inspirations, talk about the ventures that you would like to push forward and then leave it there. No need to add the extra charm, the extra comments or the flirting. No need to try to romance the good things that are coming to you right now. If anything, give the charm a break. Let people see you raw as you are. Be as simple and refined in your speech as you can. And you will avoid a lot of heartache and worry and stress that's really for nothing because the things that are coming to you now, they've been coming to you for a while and they will come to you, inshallah, they will come to you and it will be great. 
So to stress yourself and everybody else in the interim and perhaps lose out on one really big life-changing opportunity because you just couldn't be quiet, that would be a shame. And it's in that moment where you're in front of, when you're in front of that huge opportunity that you are going to want to say something. Don't. It's not about your will. It's not about doing what you want. It's not about someone antagonizing you. It's about your future being more important than whatever present perceived slight you may feel. It's about your future being more important than any pride that you may, any excess of pride that you may feel. It's about your future being more important than your ego. And either that's a lesson you learn in two seconds and the next four weeks go by like a breeze, or it's a lesson that the next four weeks teaches you over and over again. More and more harsh with every application. It's up to you. It's up to you. But where the ego steps in, there's that three of hearts. There's that nine, uh, three of swords. There's that nine of swords. It's It brings you nothing but this kind of comparative pain, right? Even in the midst of all this goodness, it's like, ah, but what about this? What about this? What about it? What about it? You have so much good going on right now, so much direction, so much fire underneath you, propelling you forward. Why does it matter? Mars retrograde in the 12th. It matters because Mars is over there fucking with your subconscious. Pulling up things from a part of your past that may be so far away that it's laughable. And yet the, the hue of a sunset or the the shape of a pane of glass or a banister somewhere and all of a sudden you're stuck in some memory from 20 years ago or 10 years ago or five years ago of something really upsetting and thinking damn it why couldn't this happen then well you're not crazy and you're not stuck in some rerun of your past it's just what the planets are doing so taking that into account we don't take that frustration out on anyone and we also learn to see those moments as teachable moments, as opposed to moments where we slip into melancholy. That's how it was and this is how it is now and you should just be grateful that it is this way now and affirm that and move forward. To be angry or resentful of how it should have been is about as stuck as you can get. And it's especially, especially disconcerting to watch someone indulge in that energy when it's very obvious that their direction forward is one full of success. So will you be a victim to your nature and the inability to let go of a grudge? And not against a specific person either. but just a grudge <laughs> with life. Are you willing to forego what is a defining characteristic in your personality to ensure your success, to take one step closer to what you know you are by the end of September, you, you choose to focus on the positive and you understand that the sadness is more of a psychological exercise. Your subconscious playing with you. And you let it be. Or you try to push, push, push for the next four weeks and everything starts to fall apart and then you say the wrong thing and then your reputation gets muddied and then everything gets ten times harder. There is also that route. <laughs> In terms of love, if you're dealing with an, a fellow earth sign, they are coming up very strong, especially if they're a Virgo. They are pretty serious, huh? Mm-hmm. 
We'll talk about that more in the extended as well as going through and shuffling out for each card. If you'd like a personal reading, there are links below for readings sent to your inbox, but also reading one-on-one -on -one live chat readings. If you would like to purchase the extended, there is a Vimeo link below and an instant extended link below, which just sends the extended reading straight to your inbox. If you are into jewelry, these are the Quietest Revolution rings. This is the High Priestess and this is the Empress. Photos of these and of fellow Rev Femme wearing these are available at the Instagram Quietest Revolution rings. And there's also a link to purchase these. One more thing, if you are into a daily look at the astrology chart and a daily horoscope for your sign, follow the RevFam on Instagram at The Quietest Revolution. That link is below as well. Okay, fam. Love you so much. Let's get into the extended right now. <laughs> 